Hello everyone, just wanted to give you a quick update on the newest features of the ALMMC. The first one is uh, the fix for roughness and specularity. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. There's our light source, let's go ahead and look down at the ground here. Let's go ahead and go to landscape and open up the material instance which drives everything in ALMMC. Okay, so so we don't have to go and scrub through any of these. Let's go ahead and right click on the parameter groups and collapse all and then reopen that and go to grass adjustments. Inside of the grass adjustments, you'll see that I've added the roughness strength and specular strength. Roughness strength is in there, but it's broken because it didn't have anything else to play with. So introducing the specular strength has resolved that problem. Let's go ahead and give it a test. The higher the value of the roughness strength, the more rough your surface, and the lower the value, the less rough. When you increase the roughness of a surface, you tend to lose out on um, your edging and anisotropy, your Fresnel effect, everything like that. So you'll get more reflections, more light being spread across the surface than on a regular material. So let's go ahead and reduce that. Point one, and you'll see here already it's looking pretty wet and shiny. If we decrease the strength of the specularity all the way, we lose out on that effect, and our surface is back to normal. If we increase the roughness strength here to something like five, again, no change, and that's what was happening before. So now let's go ahead and introduce a little bit of specularity. You can see here, we now have something to play with. So let's go ahead and reduce this again to one. You can see here, the more we reduce the strength of the roughness, the more light that's being spread across. And if we increase the specular strength, the more specularity we have across the surface, especially where there's light. Um, and out in the distance where the light's hitting that material. So that's pretty good. Um, a good value here is to, you have to finagle it for e your individual materials. But if we were to take the specular strength, reduce that to something like 0.5, we still have a pretty rough surface, but not so rough that it's kind of spreading the light across the surface um, more in a rough manner. So let's go ahead and increase the strength of the roughness to something like two. You can see how that's decreasing. You will eventually start getting diminishing returns and that's after about uh, five, I believe. And even then you're not getting much of a return. So uh, it is kind of clamped. So you'll have to uh, finagle it. Plus it's limited by the material itself. So I like to go to two. Um, or even one because it's not going to make much of a difference past two. So I two and then I like going to point one and I think that right there is a good specular amount and roughness amount. You have just enough light hitting these leaves that they kind of spark a little bit but if you need to increase that obviously you can. So uh, finagle around with the settings to find what you want you're, you're going to have to play around with it because it's going to be different for every material, but you can see here we can get all sorts of different looks and variations in our material depending on the uh, options we select. So uh, just so everything is not super bright and wet looking, we can increase this a tad bit more to like 0.9. There we go. That might be a good value. Uh, you'll see that the more this value increases, it's going to be spread across the surface this way rather than pinpointing on the light. So we'll just take that up to 1, and we'll take this to like 0, 1. Uh, you can see how it, that's even still affecting the leaves a bit, um, but we don't really want that. So 0 0.1, maybe 0 0.05. Yeah, there we go. That's good, right there. So when we move our camera we are getting our light specularity affecting the grass where the light's hitting and it doesn't look like it's too wet so 
It's going to be different for every material, but that's what you have. All right. So and if you look in the distance, it still looks really good. Every material has that introduced, by the way. So you'll be able to play with both of those settings from now on. All right. Now, the, the last thing that I have introduced is this HDRI Sky Sphere. And it follows the same concepts as ALMMC. It's super easy to get into and change your variables. So let's go ahead and open up the material instance, just like you would with the landscape material. And in here we have our HDRI controls. This is super easy. You just uh, change the rotation of the HDRI, as you can see here. It's changing the rotation. And you can change the brightness, like this and the contrast. So you'll have to find what suits your needs the most. Um, but for the time being, I like these settings right here. So I, I think this was like 20 or 50. Yeah, 50. And this was 150. There we go. And I like those settings for this specific HDRI. Now we don't have to use this one. We can use these other two that I have implemented here. You can import your own and use whatever you want, but it's the same concept as ALMMC for your textures. You just drag and drop whatever you want to use in and change the settings around to get the look you want. So in this case, it's a little blown out. So let's go ahead and decrease the brightness and maybe the contrast, nope maybe five yeah there we go and the rotation we can keep there you really want to find the sun in your hdri and make sure it lines up with your directional light in your scene you don't want to just be relying on one hdri you want to you want to have a whole bunch of different lighting options in there to kind of make your scene look good the downside to this right now anyways is as you can see here we have this horizon i there i'm you're not able to move this below the horizon just yet um, because there's just a whole bunch of issues in getting that to function the way it should. So uh, for the time being, if you want to use an HDRI, I recommend using one that does not have a horizon, which is why this one right here, I made this one for you. Because as you can see here, if we go out here, there's zero horizon. Uh, there kind of is, but it blends nicely. So uh, that's why I included that one. And for the time being, you can just use whatever you want and then just try to finagle some hiding things, uh, I guess, like implement some other objects or or uh, something else that... Um, hold on, there we go. Couldn't find that guy. Uh, or implement something else to kind of make your life a little easier with those... Um, that's because I have game view on. So it's going to be about right there or something. There we go. Uh, to make your life a little easier. Uh, but hopefully the HDRI sky sphere here that I have implemented now will make life just that much easier for you anyways. So now you don't have to worry about implementing your own HDRIs. And unless you have a better way of doing it and you want to stick with that, that's totally fine. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you can turn this one off or just remove it whatever you want you can flip it on and off right now my lighting is set up in such a way where my directional light is only being used for shadows mostly and i'm using a sky atmosphere as well so if you use the a uh, the sky sphere and you want to use the atmosphere you have to make sure that you have a directional light or else it's not going to work properly the atmosphere still affects um, the scene with the hdri but it's much better with the directional light. And that's how I recommend doing it anyways. Even in Octane and Cinema 4D and pretty much any other 3D application I use, I almost always have a directional light if I'm using an HDRI and then I'm just lining up the suns in both the image and in the scene so that they match. In this case, I have a sun object that's coming up like right here and the HDRI is right here, but that's because um, if I had it lowered towards the horizon right here it didn't really blend well and i just needed to have some pretty decent shadows and this is what i ended up with so that is the current scene 
uh, and again you can import your own landscapes in here and do whatever you want with them you don't have to rely on the ones that I provide that was the whole point of uh, this entire thing is so you can uh, easily prototype and implement your own landscapes so in, in the next update I'm hoping that I'll have a better way of breaking up tile repetition right now it's looking pretty good at at uh, ground level there is still tiling and you can only do so much for tiling anyways uh, there's not a whole lot you can do um, but just implement more ways where you can do it a mid-range and a far range is what I want to implement and then um, some occlusion parallax so uh, just some parallax displacement it's not necessarily tessellation or displacement it's just a really cheap way of giving you like a 2.5d look I'm gonna try to implement that so we can get some pretty decent visuals with our textures as well but that'll be later down the line at least for now this is in a good point where you can easily again texture your landscape and get some good looking landscapes out as you can see here so I will do another video where we just import a scene um, a landscape in and then apply our materials and it'll be like your get started um, your, your getting started video I have a couple of those, but this will be an updated version for the new workflow with the painting materials. So I will see you guys in the next video.